Hey guys, we are here with this monster, Marcus Finney in the 180 Drum Challenge. We're taking what I intended to be a simple independence exercise, and this guy has taken it to a whole other level. He's made it incredibly challenging, but uh, guys, be encouraged by this one. Take it nice and slow. What we're doing is we're playing a paradiddle, and we're going to put a bass drum between each note. These paradiddles are being played as 16th notes, so one E and a, uh, right, left, right, right, two E and a, uh, left, right, left, left, and then we're putting bass drums between each of them, which makes it 30 seconds. So Marcus, tell us a little bit about this lesson. Well, uh, this will help, I, I think, in not only in bass drum speed, yeah. but it will also help in um, developing evenness between the limbs going in between each other, uh, because it's very hard to, you know, it's very hard to do that evenly, yeah. you know, without going, or flipping one of them around. Uh, so these exercises um, that Rio came up with, um, these are tough exercises. Talking about, he said that we're simple. Get the heck out of here. Um, <laughs> simple, but, simple in the sense that um, it's if you do them really, really slow, they're meant to be simple. Simple but in the you, sense that they're one measure long, uh, <laughs> uh, one measure of a lot of stuff. And, well, yeah, and, and the whole thing is definitely to do it, to do it slow. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'll demonstrate these at a very slow tempo, slower than what um, I'm going to uh, demonstrate in the practice video. Um, we're gonna we're gonna slow these, so I'll I'll have this tempo set to 60, and at 60 BPM in the um, at 60 BPM, it's it's I'm going to make the 30 second notes. Let's think of 60 as 30. And so I'm going to put it on 16th notes at 60, which will be the 32nd note. So uh, I, I, when I count it off and you hear it and see it, it'll make uh, sense. So uh, for example, number one, um, let's, let's, let's try that right quick. So before I even play with a, with a metronome, it's a paradiddle. Basically. So, uh, and the way it's written, uh, we're going to go between, actually, let's focus just on the snare drum, playing it only on the snare before we voice it on the other drums. So, now the way to develop this is to add one note at a time with the bass drum in between each stroke. So, for example, So that is essentially the exercise, uh, and then you know we'll voice it differently, and you know in between the stickings maybe change a voice that may be between the left hand going from the snare to the hi hat or tom to snare, you know while the right hand kind of remains on the floor tom. So um, there, and then you, then you you know you will play a groove and then kind of put that lick in there. So if we were to play these things slow, um, slower than what we're gonna do in the video, this is what it would sound like. This is what it would sound like at 16th notes, not 30 seconds. So I'm gonna play twice as long as a, as a groove and then uh, couple this lick in. Now, one other thing that we're going to do demonstrate is starting the bass drum on the downbeat 
while the paradiddles are on the upbeat. Now this is definitely a little advanced, even for a lot of uh, professional cats, man, and guys with chops. Um, when you have to do this exercise consistently over and over and over again, you start to like, your brain starts to like, to try to flip it the other way around because it, it becomes so monotonous. It's like, oh my gosh, yeah. and you're, you mess up your sticking. So, um, so we'll, I'll play the same two bar uh, or one measure groove and then start it where the uh, paradiddles on the upbeats instead of the downbeats like we just did. So, I mean, when you're doing this exercise, you can actually, you'll come up with some interesting grooves um, because there are a lot of grooves that start with the, I mean, that you've already heard where the bass drum is kind of doing a four on the floor thing and the toms are doing these upbeat things. Yeah. So, uh, for example, So I mean, they're, they're, you know, within the exercise, you start to find, you know, some melodic things, some interesting grooves out of it. So definitely use this as just a rough template to build on, not lick one, lick two, lick three. Use these as strictly, um, use these strictly as exercises uh, for independence, for endurance, and for evenness across the limbs and consistency. So. Well, I think you're nailing it. I think it's interesting too because all the guys that we bring in here, there's areas where everyone finds a lesson where it's like, man, this is tough. This yeah. is a struggle, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And no uh, the reality is you determine the difficulty on these lessons. Right, you know? exactly. Like for you, you right away took this lesson and as I was watching you practice this, right away Marcus was like pushing himself to his limits with it because that's the kind of guy you are. You're yeah. like taking it and that's what you should do for yourself because what is comfortable for you isn't even comfortable for me at all. Mm -hmm. Like even in the even in the practice video, we'll have you demonstrating certain stuff, and it's going to be a tempo that I'm going to have to sit and practice it on. Yeah, you know, I just know that based on the, even the intro that he played, there's no way I'm going to be able to blaze that stuff. So mm -hmm. it's really cool to see that. And again, this is a bass drum speed builder. It's like you said, this isn't something you play as a lick. It would right. be kind of weird, and it would sound really methodical. Mm -hmm. It's meant to be just an exercise to challenge us and the way you're laying it out is perfect. Right. Um, so, I mean, that's really the idea for this lesson. In the practice video, we're working on it at, uh, I think we said 40 beats per minute we wanted to do it, mm -hmm. 55 beats per minute, and then we may or may not throw a 70 beat per minute one in there. We'll see how you're feeling, because yeah. that's fast. 70 is fast. I yeah. mean, you wouldn't think it is, but at 30 second notes, that's it. 70 is, at that point, 320. One other question for you, how would you count 30 second notes for yourself? Do you like to count it one e and a one e and a two e and a two e and a? Do you have a way of counting? Because most people don't. I I don't, man. I I just I only. You think of the sixteenths. I think of it as sixteenths and fill in the gaps. Yeah. Um, Cause the more counting you do, sometimes the more cluttered I feel your mind can become. Right. I feel like a few things. The same thing applies to time signatures too, which we'll talk about later. Yeah. Um, the fewer uh, beats you count verbally thinking longer phrases. Yeah. Um, and some people can subdivide like that. I'm, yeah. I'm just not that dude. Um, I have to limit how many I'm going to count. Yeah. So if I know that I'm playing that, 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 if that's eight, there's 16 if I do 30 seconds. And those six, those, those other ones lay in between the eight that I played. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, you 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 figure out what works best for you, and um, and 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 start it at, with the metronome, and I'll set the metronome to uh, the highest note value I can get. So if I if I'm wanting, for example, to do um, thirty second notes at let's say eighty, 
If I want to do 30 second notes at 80, I would set my metronome to 160 and set my metronome right. to 16th notes. Yep. And think so you can hear that 80, version. and yeah. I have 30 second notes being played. So um, it was like earlier you gave the example of 30 and 60. When you're hearing the quarter notes at 30, you're hearing the 30 seconds. When you put it to 60, you're hearing the eighths, right? Yes. Right, and then you hear, you just think of it that way. I know what you're saying. Right, so 30 is a quarter note, 60 is the eighth eights. note, 120 is the 16th note, and 240 is a 32nd note. So, I feel like I gotta give you a high five after that. That's, uh, <laughs> that's awesome, man. That's good. So, um, yeah. Yeah, it's funny. It's stuff, tons of numbers, but more than anything, we're just working on building up that bass drum speed, developing these ideas, and just getting the hang of, like you said, this can inspire and lead to other stuff, especially if there's like, if you're really into the linear patterns, this is going to be really helpful getting your bass, you're getting the coordination, right. essentially, right? Mm -hmm. Getting all that happening in the independence. But um, that's it for this lesson. Why don't you play us out, and then we're going to have the practice video, and I cannot wait to see you push yourself to the limit on some of these. So, yeah, me neither. Be fun. All right, guys, that's it for this <laughs> lesson. We'll see you in the practice video.